girls to therapy, so we've got a little while um, to chat. I actually need to go run a couple errands to mail off some adoption paperwork and to mail off Mika's communication device. Let me show it to you. Hold on. Let me get it. So y'all know that she uses a communication device since she's nonverbal and it's a very fancy one and they're fairly pricey. Insurance did cover a lot of it, um, but it comes in this big big protective case. It actually has a speaker on it and everything. Well, she has dropped it multiple times, but um, this time she dropped it just right and it completely shattered the screen. Can you see that? Like it just immediately did that. <laughs> I was shocked. That happened probably a month or so ago, and it just took a while to get the paperwork needed, um, to get my request put in with the company to get it repaired, and then that's a whole whole thing in and of itself. I had to fill out tons of forms. I had to go to her pediatrician for him to clarify that she, in fact, is still nonverbal and she needs a communication device. And then they have to get approval from the insurance company that they will pay to repair it. And then I can ship it off. So I got the email last week, late last week, that um, insurance will cover the repair. So now I've got to go ship it off. So I've got to do that today. But it's raining. And it's not supposed to be raining later on this afternoon. So I think later on this afternoon, I'm going to run my errands to the post office. So that means right now we can chat and I can catch you up on both of our adoptions, one in China and one in Bulgaria. Y'all know that we started the adoption process in China back in... 2020, May of 2020, almost four years ago. Um, and that was right when COVID shut the world down. And um, China still has not resumed adoptions. Last summer, China finally reached out to all the agencies and they allowed very, very slowly from like July to December, they allowed a couple handfuls of families who already had travel approval, they allowed them to travel and to bring their kids home and complete their adoption. So that was super exciting. And everyone's just been holding out, waiting to hear, is China going to allow the rest of us com to complete our adoptions? Chinese New Year happened back in February. We were all kind of hope. I say we, a lot of the families were hopeful that after the Chinese New Year, things will resume and we'll hear from the powers that be in China and things will start moving along and nobody has heard anything. However, I will say last week, one of the waiting families received an email from the consulate in Guangzhou stating that one of their pieces of document had been updated and kind of issued. But still, no word on, like, does this mean they're reviewing cases or are they just auditing and trying to see where all these families are at in the process? I mean, we just don't know. And so a lot of the families get really excited about this and really hopeful that maybe movement will come. And I just teeter-totter, like, right in the middle of, yeah, I mean, that was exciting, I guess you could say, that at least someone is on the other end of a computer system looking at some of these adoption processes to see where they're at and they're doing something, whether they're shuffling paperwork or whatever. Um, but then on the flip side of it, like I just, I just have no hope in that process. I have no hope in that country, quite honestly. Um, I, I just have to keep my hope in Christ and that he will fulfill what he started. Um, but, you know, I also know that, like, you know, the Lord's ways, we'll never understand. We'll never fully understand the Lord's ways. And I have to trust that even in the not knowing of what he is doing, will he fulfill this journey that he started within our family and hundreds of other families? Will he fulfill that or, or, or not? I don't know. That feels very odd coming out of my mouth. Very odd coming out of my mouth. So we're still just waiting. As far as our Bulgaria adoption goes, we started that in November of 2022. 
we just figured while we're in the whites of China, we can start another process in another country and bring another child home because we're ready, willing, and able. We we want to bring in more orphans into our family as, you know, as the Lord sees fit. Um, and it's just been a slow process, y'all. We're waiting on a referral. We've been waiting about six months for a referral. Um, and again, I get frustrated at the long wait. We're already having to update our home study, which is almost $2,000 to update because home studies are only good for 18 months. And so we're now have been working on updating our home study, which takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. And that's what I've got to go mail off today. Some more paperwork to get background checks and clearances and you have to get fingerprints all over again. You have to submit financials. You have to get reference letters, guardianship level uh, letters for your other kids. Like, it's just a lot. So, you know, while I wish that something would move along with Bulgaria, um, I really have to trust the Lord's timing because we do have this other adoption within China that we have no idea what's going to happen. And first and foremost, our main goal is to complete that adoption within China and bring that sweet little girl home into our family because we claim her as our own. We claim her as our daughter. So that's kind of where we're at with both adoptions. I've told y'all before that I'm doing the Bible recap reading journey, which is reading the Bible chronolo in chronological order within a year. Tara Lee Cobble is the host of it. She created it, and I absolutely love her. You can find the Bible recap within the Bible app on your phone, um, and I am loving it. I'm almost on day 100 of it and just loving it, and this is why I love it, because it tells you which scriptures, that you're, which chapters you're going to read each day, okay, in the little app. It can audibly read it to you. You can follow along in your Bible. That's what I do, because I like to audibly hear it, and I like to see it, and then I like to take notes. So then after you finish the daily reading, Tara Lee has a short five to seven minute video where she recaps what you just read, and Y'all know, especially in the Old Testament, sometimes you're reading this stuff and you really don't have a clue what is going on. And you're like, I just wasted 20 minutes of my time and I don't even know what I read or what is happening in this chapter. I'm clueless. Well, Tara Lee just breaks it down and, and kind of goes over what just happened and gives you so much insight to just broaden how you think about things and how you read things, how you look at things. Uh, but what I love most about Tara Lee and what she encourages within this program is that she encourages us to quit going to scripture so as to find out more about ourselves. Y'all know I'm guilty of it too. We have so many times gone to scripture gone to the Bible and have wanted to, wanted God to reveal his answer to our problems. You know, what is the answer to this struggle? How are you going to provide in this circumstance? Um, why haven't you answered my prayer request that I've been praying for four years? So what happens then is we are going to scripture with a very self-focused attitude and mindset. And honestly, that leaves you very unsatisfied. Because what if you go in and you read two or three chapters in a, say, the book of Psalms or whatever, because you're going there looking for an answer to your prayer, but maybe you didn't get the answer to your prayer within that scripture. So you walk away frustrated and just really irritated at God. Like, you want me to sit here and read this, but you're not giving me what I need. And that's so completely backwards, y'all. Instead, you need to change your mindset and why you go to Scripture. And the reason why you go to Scripture is to learn more about who God is. His character, His love, His judgment, His discipline, His provision. You're going there to seek out who Christ is, not to seek out who you are. It's not a self-help book, y'all. The Bible is not a self-help book. I just really almost feel a renewing in my mind and my spirit to really hold tight to this journey God has put us on. And it has strengthened my faith in some way. Because I'm seeing how through scripture, God has shown up even in the most destitute of situations, even with the most sinful, disgusting 
people that you can imagine. He will use them to bring glory to his name and he will use them to finish the plan that he has set in place. So I was reading in Judges, I guess it was last week, about Gideon. And I'm just going to really quickly kind of tell you how it spoke to me. Um, now, I'm not looking for this to speak to me in regards to like my, you know, our adoption. Like I wasn't like, okay, God, show me something that's going to like reference back to our adoption. That wasn't my mindset. But just like the more I kept reading the story and I hear Tara Lee recapping about God's character and how he showed up in that situation, um, I just was like, okay, this... This is very encouraging to me. So Gideon has been appointed by God to lead the Israelites to uh, defeat the Midianites. And Gideon is just a farmer. He's a weak man. Um, he doesn't have a lot of self-confidence by any means. And so when God the Son physically showed up in front of Gideon to tell him that you are going to lead these people into battle, um, Gideon was very skeptical. He was like, who am I? Like, I am weak. I'm from the weakest tribe of them all. Um, why are you appointing me to lead this battle? Gideon even goes on to say, in the presence of God the Son, physically in front of him, he was like, I feel forsaken. I feel you have forgotten about me. Who am I to go and do this? One of the things that Tara Lee pointed out was that Gideon literally was in the presence of God the Son, and he was questioning his presence in his life. And I think that that is so relatable because if we sit down and think about how God is ever so present in our life and how um, he has healed so many things within our lives and he has answered prayers that we have somehow forgotten that he did answer. He has provided in ways that we can't fathom. Um, we start questioning God when we come upon a new struggle, hence our adoption, right? Our chi adoption in China. Like, God, where are you? I feel like you have forgotten about us. Like, just like Gideon was, was questioning um, God the Son in physical form, he was like, where, where I feel forgotten. And I'm like, yes, that's me. I feel forgotten here. I feel like God is just like, where are you, Lord, in this situation? And it's just ironic that Gideon was questioning, questioning God in the presence of God, right? Do you, does that make sense? Gideon started out with about 32,000 people to help him fight this battle. And God decreased that army down to 300 people. So he went from 32,000 to 300 people. And you know Gideon was freaking out by then. He was like, I was feeling insecure with 32,000 and now you've got me down to 300 people with me to fight this massive war against the Midianites? Like, what are you doing, God? Just questioning him once again. And I'll just be honest, that's exactly where I'm at with this adoption. I'm like, God, where are you? How are you going to defeat this? How are you going to overcome this? I know you can, but how? You know, it's just like, it's hard to see with our human eyes, right? And I, I love what Tara Lee said about this right here, just talking about the size of his army, how God decreased Gideon's army so that he could increase his glory. Like, he decreased the logical. The logical that made sense was to have a huge army for Gideon to attack the Midianites. That, that would be the most logical things. But God said, no, I want to receive the glory from a miraculous victory over this war. I don't want it to be off of logic and what makes most sense to to us, to men, right? And so that's exactly what the Lord did. So Gideon and his 300 people went and they didn't even have swords. They didn't even have weapons, but they went into this camp with lamps and trumpets and singing and all of this. And they won the battle by killing at like 123 Midianites with no weapons. I mean, how can you not look at that and say, that was all God. God was ever present with him. And what I loved, because like I've already said, I, I go through these spurts of like, I feel like I have a lot of faith. And then I feel like I don't have a lot of faith. And then I feel guilty for not having a lot of faith. And I just don't know where to land in it all. In this story with Gideon, Gideon doubts God a lot. 
and he questions God a lot. And he, his fear is showing because he tries to take things into his own hands and it didn't work so well for him, right? So God didn't give up on Gideon. He didn't like backtrack on who he appointed to go and lead these people into battle and to, to declare victory over the Midianites. Um, he didn't say, oh, oops, you're right. I made the wrong decision, Gideon. He's like, no, I am with you. I am your peace. I will comfort you. I will guide you. I will lead you. It is not within Gideon's own strength. Can this victory be accomplished? It's it's through God's divine strength. It's through God's divine sovereignty and his and and to fulfill his purpose that he put in place. That is how victory is going to be won. And it was just so encouraging that God didn't get angry when Gideon was in his weaknesses and he was all up in his feelings. He didn't get angry and reject him. He comforted him. He reminded Gideon of who he is. In Gideon's weaknesses, God didn't pump Gideon up by giving him a positive self-talk, giving him affirmations about how wonderful he is and like, you've got this, you can do this, Gideon. No, he constantly reminded Gideon of who he is, that he is his great provider, that he is the peace that surpasses all understanding, that he will be with him and that through the Lord, Gideon will declare victory over that camp. And he absolutely did. Absolutely did. Um, and it was just such a good reminder that, you know, Ashley, God is not looking for you to have perfect faith. He isn't looking for you to have this perfect biblical godly mindset when I come upon four year seasons of life that are just a struggle and you're just like, God, where are you in this? He isn't giving up on me and he isn't angry with me when I kind of fall into those frustrations. He, but what I'm seeing, and especially through this reading program, is that what I fall back on now is knowing the character of God and knowing who he is because I've seen it. I'm seeing it in all of these stories throughout scripture that we've already read. And it's just really comforting um, to know that God isn't expecting perfection out of me. He just wants your heart. He just wants your your vulnerable, willing heart choosing to still trust in him even when it's hard. Even when it's hard, that's what he's calling us to do is to lean on him, to lean not on our understanding, but on his, because we can't possibly know how his purposes are going to be fulfilled. And it's not for us to know, right? But it was just a great encouragement. So I've got to go get Isabel and get her to her next therapy session. So I'll see you back here in a few minutes.